G'day guys, I'm Matt Brand, and this oh, is the M4 Sada 4 Series. <laughs> BMW have invited me to review the all new 4 Series at this press launch and I'm pretty excited. Probably why I look like I have spot burns all over my face. Let's get this out of the way. Yes, the BMW 4 Series has a gigantic, ginormous, enormous grill. You hate it, I like it, let's leave it at that. Of course there is more to the car than just a grill so today we're going to discuss all of them. And just FYI guys because this is a launch event I'll be driving different cars today. Right now I'm in the 440i but you might see the 420i and the 430i in the shots. It is what it is. <laughs> now if you are new around here please do go down there and hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. I release an awesome new car review like this every single week and while you're there please do like the video. It really helps small content creators like me. I would very much appreciate it. I've also left timestamps down in the description below or click on the YouTube chapters if you're on your mobile if you want to skip ahead. All right, enough waffling on. Let's get straight into the review. You know, I kind of set myself up for failure on this channel because I always start up front and talking about the grill, but this grill is... <laughs> this grill's pretty good. <laughs> Again, I know people hate it. I get it. I can see why I like it. I feel like we should just leave it at that. Please don't just completely dislike this video because you hate the grill. I get it. In fact, why don't you go down there and tell me what do you love or hate, despise about the grill? Get it out of the way in the comments section below. I'm interested to know what you guys think. Otherwise, there are some really cool body lines that actually flow on from the grill because intentionally the grill is supposed to be the centerpiece of the front. Interestingly to me is how flat the front is. It really is just like a snub-nosed dog right at the front. I love it because it's just unique. What other car looks like this? No other car looks like this. The headlights are classic BMW and they are very functional as well. Great low beam and high beam, even on the standard LED. And then flanking the grill are two air vents to streamline air over the side. Don't know how much it does, but it does something, I'm guessing. Then we have the side and the side is super sleek and, and a bit a bit bloated almost. It's not like a very muscular look. It is, it is very soft and, and I'm still trying to come to terms with that, I don't know how I feel. I do love the wheels though, they are really cool. And the way it's quite low to the ground as well is really neat design. And fun fact, the center of gravity is around 21 millimeters lower to the ground than the 3 Series. Probably doesn't mean much to you and me, but it means something. For me, my favorite angle are the front three quarters and not the rear three quarters, because to me, the rear three quarters is just so polar opposite to the front. What I mean by that is it is just a little bit boring. There are some aspects I love. I really like the tail lights, especially the way that they're kind of like tinted. And the integrated ducktail spoiler looks fantastic. And then apart from the fake vents to the bottom left and right, and also the real exhausts, well, that's about it. It's just so different to the front. It, I don't, it makes no sense to me. Overall, when I spoke to the designers of the 4 Series, they said they wanted it to be entirely different to the 3 Series, and, and I think they've delivered. It looks very, very different from the 3 Series, except for the M3 and M4. They're identical, don't know why. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh man, this thing is nuts. This thing is nuts. I get that 50% of you hate it and 50% of you love it. I'm not gonna really harp on too much about it. I like it though. So yeah, go down to the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And actually while you're down there, I've left a poll. What do you think looks better, this 4 Series or the BMW 3 Series? I'm curious to know what you guys think. In a lot of ways, they are similar cars. All right, moving on to the interior and I wanna start with the overall look, layout and feel. First of all, the interior is just not so schmutzo. I love it, I really think it's cool. Not necessarily because it's outlandish in any way like the front, it is very much the same inside as the BMW 3 Series. That's a really, really good thing. This like tan interior within here is, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I would prefer black myself, but 
I don't know, it's a nice enough spec, especially for a coupe, I suppose. The build quality within here is absolutely incredible. You just cannot fault it. Seriously, the best out of all of its competitors, Audi, Mercedes, BMW does it best in terms of quality and feel. You've also got trims along the dash, which is like a, not quite carbon fiber, not quite metal. It's kind of like a hybrid between it. Though it is just like a gloss plastic when you touch it. You know, it's stitching up on the dash. It's a very nice place to be. In terms of ergonomics and practicality, well, the steering wheel is tilting and telescoping of course and really adjustable as are the seats they adjust in literally any way possible imaginable they do it storage is pretty good as well you have a big center armrest you have ample storage up front for your phone you got a couple cup holders there more in the doors big glove box truly there are plenty of storage spaces in terms of io you have a usb port up front and you have a 12 volt socket and you have a little wireless charging tray as well man the way that this thing hooks onto the road is insane moving on to the seats now and yeah they are this beautiful leather they look pretty good as i said don't know how i feel about them yet but i suppose for a coupe it is a good spec the seats themselves are incredibly comfortable and i mean very comfortable especially because they can just adjust in every which way possible you have adjustable bolsters on the side which is a thick person i appreciate because it means i can slacken them off a bit it's just as close to perfect as you really need the seats are heated but they aren't cool that is a bit of a shame wouldn't be surprised if that was just an optional extra to be honest and yeah i've just got really zero complaints there this steering wheel is a big chunky boy it is the bmw m sport steering wheel and uh yeah you know it because it's big but so it should be to control a car like this so this thing is this thing is terrifyingly quick guys terrifyingly quick but it is really functional on the left hand side you have your cruise and safety controls and then on the right hand side you have your media and your phone controls and also the digital instrument cluster control well in terms of cruise control it is an optional extra to have the full safety suite here but it does a great job at just keeping you a safe distance from the car in front of you with the adaptive cruise control and also the lane keep and centering assist oh this guy's nuts car is nuts but yeah i love this steering wheel it is quite thick so if you have small hands you really do want to take this for a test drive you'd want to anyway but but yeah it's uh it's big moving on to the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster up in front of me it is the same that you'll get in the 3 series and across a lot of other bmw models and it's just fantastic it does show plenty of information right now i have the navigation going and it's right right in front of me it's good it isn't very customizable so i'm not going to say it's the best in the business to be honest i do prefer the mercedes system which is just way more customizable but it's still pretty damn good up in front as well is an all new heads up display and it is massive when i say it takes up the majority of the space in front of me i i really mean it but it's it works very well the 10.25 inch infotainment system is also really good it kind of feels quite small now with all the new systems coming out but it's still very very good and now it does come with android auto so i would clap except i'm doing a hundred on a highway so that's probably not a good idea but it is wireless android auto it works very well the maps itself also really good it is super functional because it does have as i said maps it's got digital radio new android auto and apple carplay you can of course control this iDrive system from the center console or it is a touch screen as well so your choice but otherwise it is the same infotainment screen you would get in every other bmw out there right now so it's good. And of course, being a four series coupe, you do have rear seats. The leg room is pretty good. I'm not gonna say it's amazing, but it's all right. Headroom is absolutely atrocious. Atrocious, 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 bad. <laughs> Headroom is bad. That's because of the really sloping roof line of the coupe. So it's not the leg room that would make you not sit back there. It's, it's the headroom. And toe room is totally fine too. Of course, get the same nice seats back there. So it's a nice place to be. In terms of boot space, you have 440 liters of boot space. That's uh, that's pretty good. It certainly is a very usable amount of space. You can drop the rear seats as well if you need more space. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty practical car, surprisingly for being, you know, a coupe. Of course, what you want to know is how does the four series drive? Man, is this car good. Right now, I'm in the M340i, and it is a monster of a machine. You have a three liter, six cylinder turbo engine, and it pumps out 285 kilowatt of power and 500 newton meters of torque. Fun fact, this engine actually has 10 kilowatt more power than our European counterparts because we don't have the petrol particulate filter. The zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour is around about, oh my God. It's about four seconds. No, <laughs> no, that did not just come out of this car. Ah, oh, I got chills, my nips are hard. 
Whoa! So yeah, this car is insanely quick. Insanely quick. Straight pipes. In your video, you said that it was normal people fast. What? No, it's really, really fast. Now you can thank the all-wheel drive system for that because yes, this does come with an all-wheel drive system. It is rear-wheel bias, but it puts power down like no tomorrow. Around town, the 4 Series is a delight. You do get adaptive suspension on this M440i variant, and yeah, it's really good. It just drives amazingly well around town, but where it's best, of course, is the twisties out back. So legally, I have to go a little bit slower here, but I'll tell you what, even driving around these bends is just incredible. You can do things like, hey, BMW. Hey, BMW. Put me into sport mode. Hello. Put me into sport mode. Could you try once again? Could you please put me into sport mode? Please repeat your um, Go away. Okay, go away. Enough. Destination. No, stop. Cancel. Cancel. Which one should I select? Stop! Okay. Of course, the 4 Series doesn't just come in the M440i. My God. It also comes in a 420i and a 430i, both of which have two liter four cylinder turbocharged engines. The 420i pumping out 135 kilowatt of power and 300 newton meters of torque, and the 430i pumping out 190 kilowatt of power and 400 newton meters of torque. Okay, so here we are in the 430i. I wanted to talk about the four cylinder engines because obviously the M440i is insane but you still get really good performance out of the four cylinders. Now in the 420i, yes, you have less power, but dynamically it drives just the same as the 430i. And that is to say, really, really good. The center of gravity is low. There is 50-50 weight distribution or thereabouts. It feels like a real driver's car. Though I must admit right now I'm tailing the M440i. I wish I was back in there. <laughs> Whoa. It's such a punchy engine. It's funny, to me, driving around the M440i, especially in these urban settings, is actually a little bit easier because these four cylinders are so torquey. They really just want to go, especially in this 430i with the bigger tune, 190 kilowatt of power, 400 newton meters of torque. You can tell. Four cylinder engines, they do come as rear wheel drives, which is great. It means that you truly have a driver focused car. So I give it a bit of sauce. <laughs> Even this four cylinder, it's just a perler of an engine. A perler. When you take it around the twisties, maybe a bit too fast, it is so stable. And it doesn't even have the limited slip differential that the M440i has. Handling is just so superb. It is <laughs> really good. It just takes corners with ease. There are no issues there at all. It is just incredible how it holds on. Wow. Anyway, enough of the four cylinder. Let's go back to the six. But let me tell you, it's the M440i is the one you want. <laughs> it's the one you want. It is quick, really, really quick. Power delivery through this eight-speed automatic transmission is just incredible. It is a torque converter, but it's one of the best torque converters out there. It is so quick, nimble, feels so planted on the road. You do get a limited slip differential as well, so the way it takes corners is just absurd. As I said, handling is amazing, whether it's around town or on a twisty like this, and suspension, because it is adaptive, just so good. Fuel economy is absolutely fantastic as well, in small part because it does have a mild hybrid system, but I'm getting 12.3 liters per 100 kilometers on average. You can easily see around eight liters if you drive <laughs> normally, which you just shouldn't in one of these, but you could. Oh, it just handles so aggressively well. Does that make sense? I think it does, yeah. I, I'm truly in love with this car. It is very good. So is it worth it? Well, Ah, that's up to you. The 4 Series starts at 70,900 Australian dollars before drive away pricing, while the M440i is around 116,000 Australian dollars before on road pricing. And that puts it right in par with the C43 and the Audi S5. If you hate the looks, don't get it. But if you like the looks like I do, and you want genuinely the best driving car at this price point, then absolutely go for it. It is such a great car and how it drives, the comfort on the inside, I like the looks, you might hate the looks, whatever. If that's not your cup of tea, then avoid it. If it is, this car is worth it. It is that good. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Click over there if you want to watch one of my other really cool car reviews. I highly recommend it. And subscribe to this channel so you can see as soon as I release awesome new car reviews like this every single week. And while you're at it, please like and comment on the video. It really helps small content creators like me. And yeah, I'll see you next week.